My dad, he was praying and God said, I have been trying to get this young man on earth and I knew I could trust him with you. I am a seven or eight, seven point five. What's the point five about? Um, optimism. Today is a day, so I am very. Um, what's the right word? I'm very private in a sense. I think I'm in a season of yes, where I want to explore more of the opportunities that God has for you. You will ask God to open up doors, and God will open up doors for you, but he won't walk through them for you. Amen. And it's a space where he prepares you for opportunities, but you still have to be there and, and participate. And so I love that obedience. And so it's this point five of more optimism in the sense of we're doing a podcast. Yes. I don't think I'm that interesting to my own eyes. Wow. But the fact that people want to know more about it, I love. And so that's always humbling. So mm -hmm. super excited to be here. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you a lot about that. I kind of definitely resonate with you say about just opening doors because I never would have thought I'll be here. Um, I used to have this thing like I don't really like talking. I hear God, you need to talk. You need to talk. I'm like, no, no, please. And then this after I was obedient, he'll say, I can hear him say, okay, I will feel a different relaxation versus the optimization. <laughs> I feel relaxed. Basically, yeah. how I would feel, like, <laughs> see, because it's it, we're here, and this is what happens, yeah. right? And I say I'm not ready to talk. Yeah. And he still puts me in those rooms to talk. Yep. And sometimes it takes a minute to get comfortable. Yes. And so, with that being said, with you, how you feel, and I feel, I think we should start off with prayer and yeah. just invite the Holy Spirit to the conversation. Definitely. So that way we can get what God need <laughs> and take out what, what we what yes. we're on, right? Definitely. Father, thank you for bringing us here today. Uh, I just say less of us, more of you, Lord. Holy Spirit, take up space. Holy Spirit, fill this place. And let's just get done what we need to get done. We're here in obedience. We love you, Lord. And we're so grateful and thankful. We ask it all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So you mentioned being shy, but you have three books. I want to say I'm shy. Okay. I think I'm just introverted. Okay. Yes. Why? Severely. Have you always been introverted? Because yes. you wouldn't know that. Yes. I love people. I love talking. I'm not afraid to public to speak in public, but I personally enjoy a long time. Um, I'm a naturalist, so I love nature. If I can be on the water, in the woods, a walk, um, every Saturday I'm going to a local uh, trail here and just walking and it clears my mind and space. I receive um, inspiration, energy, um, ideas, creativity. When it's I'm in my when I'm alone and can process, I see things in pictures, okay. and so all, all things have to connect. And so I love seeing things in real form and how it plays out. That gives me energy. So then when I can come here, mm -hmm. um, it's able to easily express. Me talking is like being on a treadmill. Wow! So. Wow! Well, we really appreciate you being here today. I connect a lot with nature as well. Do you believe trees have healing powers? I don't know if they have healing powers. Mm -hmm. I've gotten sick from trees. I got really? poison ivy. <laughs> what? I have had sap in my eyes. Mm -hmm. I've been bitten by ants. I don't want to say they have. They probably might have some something in them. Mm -hmm. I do love trees, but we climb a lot of trees, and so to see farther um, and to see out. And we've had some. Me and my brothers had some fun stories. Being one of us doing my cleansing and because I reconnect a lot with that I call it earthing as well okay. so I'll walk barefoot in like the mud and I'll take my socks off and then I'll lay on the trees and just <laughs> get these ideas and, and, and it was great but to me I always felt like trees had some type of healing power okay. or something like that and I'll sit on them I'm mad you have poison ivy though yeah, um, I know <laughs> I've never heard of us having poison ivy how, yep. how does that work where's the poison ivy go um it's little vines that grows up and as you learn you can locate them um they grow up around um, fences and posts and sometimes around trees 
Once you have poison ivy one time, you will learn what the plant looks like and you will avoid it. Okay, yes, so where yes. are you from, Solomon? Louisiana. Louisiana? Yes. Okay, and if, are you spending a lot of time outside? Or would you say you was an outside kid? Absolutely. Or you was a, okay. My mom gave us a job. Okay. Nine to five, outside. <laughs> that was it. She said, all right, you can never come in at this time. Yeah. And it's okay. Yeah. And you are a family of how many? So I have, it's six of us all together. I am the oldest. Okay. I have three younger brothers. Um, Joshua and Caleb um, are the twins. And Daniel is the baby. And my parents, David and Emma, all have biblical names. I was going to say that. Now, yeah. Let's explain. Does, does your mom have a reason how she ex um, picked those biblical names? Or did hmm. she just... Do you come from a really religious family? I Yes. So my dad said two things. He was like, one, you don't have any money in life. We do. So okay. you need to figure out your job and your career because at 18, you're going somewhere. Okay. Um, uh, but secondly, he said, the best thing that I can give you is two things. One, a work ethic and a relationship with God. Wow. And so my dad um, exemplified that throughout his entire life um, with us. So my dad's name is David. He always wanted a son named Solomon. <laughs> Wow. And so my mom loves the name Joshua and Caleb, and she had twins. So twins run in our family. Wow. And so they love that. And then Daniel is a beautiful story. So my parents were done, and um, Daniel is 10 years younger than me, and he was a surprise baby. Wow. And my parents were really surprised, and they were confused because they were like, okay, the boys are moving on, Solomon's 10. We were latchkey kids. We were coming home, and everyone, we just had a rhythm. And then my mom gets pregnant again, and she's getting ready to go from assistant principal to principal. Wow. And my dad, he was praying, and God said, I have been trying to get this young man on earth, and I knew I could trust him with you. Wow. And my dad always told us that, and so Daniel was really special. Um, and as he's the youngest, he's the baby boy. He is the most um, in tune with his emotions and passionate, <laughs> probably in all of us, but he makes us laugh. And, uh, he does great stuff. He's big on social media as well and does fit checks and all this stuff. And so mm -hmm. he keeps me cool. Right, right. So this this all came about, hashtag check on your strong friends, is because it was a mental health campaign, yeah. right? And it was Mental Health Awareness Month. And we're building this platform, essentially. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're building this platform. And I heard do something different. Yeah. And... I didn't know I was going to be building a platform. I didn't know I would be here today. I didn't even know, like, I just I just didn't know. Yeah. And, but I'm seeing the good things that's coming from it. I'm, I'm seeing, like, not our work. I'm really seeing God's hand on a lot of things that we're doing. And we like to, you know, project that message of things that only God can do. Yeah. And we look at your prayers a lot. Yeah. I look at your prayers a lot. And I yeah. say, wow, this man has a lot of prayers. And the prayers are really good. I am a firm believer that prayers work. Yes. How did you come about just posting these prayers on the page? And how do you get these prayers? Mm. Is there Are they recycled prayers? Because I know you have books now. And you're yeah. on your third book, right? Yep. And it's about prayers, it right? Is. How do we get there? How, how did that start? <laughs> um, I have always been in tune with my emotions. So I know how I feel. Um, and my mom really wanted us to work on articulating our feelings. So when we got upset, especially when we were younger, she would always say, okay, what are you feeling? And so we had to navigate our emotions mm -hmm. to navigate what are we actually feeling. And it was a good exercise for us to go through, but it was also annoying when you're a child um, to navigate that and, yeah. <laughs> and try and learn that. But it did something that I loved. It allowed me to be in tune with where I am because you can't really fix or find yourself if you can't locate yourself. Wow. And so you have to be able to locate to know where you are. Um, I pastored for a while and it was beautiful. Absolutely loved it. And it was mm -hmm. for a beautiful season. And I've always been bivocational, so I've always had a job. And then I've always, in a sense, pastored. And I've always loved people. One of the questions that I always got when people ask is, how do I connect with God? How do I have a relationship with God similar to you? You seem really in touch. And I was like, I don't see a difference between me and you. The difference I do see is that for me, I take a lot to God in each and every single moment. My dad taught us that very at a young age. Of, before we left, we saw two things in the morning. One, we all had to um, stand together and we held hands and we would pray. And then the boys, we would go jump in the truck, get in there <laughs> and uh, start playing. But at a young, at, when we got older, we began to realize when we left, 
my dad and mom would be standing in the kitchen and they'd be praying for each other. And so wow. we begin to see that as, you know, you know, you see it as younger and you're just like, okay, we're in the back of the truck ready to go to school. Um, as you get older, you begin to see that your life is really built up of the habits that you create. Your daily habits create the life that you walk in. And so for me, it was a moment of prayer has always been important. And so honestly, when I was younger, um, I would be in situations and we grew up on the lake and I would have all kind of unique experiences. And I remember I would stop and I would say, hey, God, I need a favor. And in that moment, I would articulate, one, the feelings, what I was feeling from what my mom told me. I understood the power of prayer because I saw what my dad and the fruit in his life and my mom's life. And in there, I began to pray about anything. I can pray about God. I got a test. I ain't study at all. <laughs> I, hey, God, there's this girl at school. I think she is amazing. Mm-hmm. Hey, God, I don't know what I'm going to do with college. I don't know if mm-hmm. I'm going to make it in. Mm-hmm. Hey, God, I'm really struggling with insecurities at this point. Mm-hmm. Like, there is a lot that I'm dealing with. And I began to talk to God just about my life to navigate yeah. really situations because I had seen the power of God. And so... I began to um, correlate very quickly. God cares about the details of our life. Wow. He cares about the small things. He cares about the things that we go through. He's so meticulous to where I wanted to make decisions with him involved. Wow. And so I wanted to, and that's how you begin to learn that character of God. You begin to see, the scripture talks about David and it says that he was a man after God's own heart. And mm-hmm. it's beautiful because I see that because he kept his heart empty. Mm-hmm. When you read the Psalms and you go through it, that's essentially what Hey God is. Hey God is an updated version of the book of Psalms. Wow. When you look at Psalms and you look at um, in Psalms 51, and, and you, it's David's ballad and he comes out and he's like, oh, wretched, wretched that I am. And he talks about one, the sin of after his sin with Bathsheba. Or you begin to look at Psalm 91 and you begin to see the one he's just praying for really defense and protection is these moments where you begin to see David as being honest and open and real with whatever situation he's yeah. going through. Yeah. And so I began to, my degrees are in psychology, and I um, actually began to take prayers and post them on um, social media because I didn't, I, social media is an interesting place to say the least. I've heard it, you say that it, before. It's not real, and I don't like putting pictures out for several different reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, some insecurities, some I don't like, I like my privacy um, in spaces. And um, I just, I don't like attention all the time unless I bring the attention on me <laughs> and you can't control social media and where it can go. Yeah. And so um, I wanted to find a way to connect and add value. And so I started um, really posting prayers for my journal mm-hmm. and they began to really take off. Right. And I was really impressed um, with that people were correlating with them. Mm-hmm. And honestly, God's, I begin to see this and people ask all the time, we talk about the anointing, you talk about um, how does it connect, how does it work. In order to be in a space where God has gives you an anointing, you have to go through a breaking. Yeah. And I don't think people realize the prayers that people see in there, those are my real prayers from just hard, really traumatic moments. Wow. And it's a moment of wherever you are in life, I want people to know that God is with you. Amen. He never leaves, he never forsakes. We have to connect with him, and I wanted to give language to help people connect in hard, hard moments. So I use Hey God as more of a heart healing. I've always been um, connected and described as um, a one who speaks from the heart yeah. in that aspect. And so I wanted to provide language of the heart. Yeah. And how could we correlate? Jesus talked to the disciples when you look at the Lord's Prayer. How do we pray? Mm-hmm. My goal is to help give uh, prayer prompts when people are dealing with real life situations mm-hmm. to connect with God to find what's the right way to handle this. Yeah, and those prayers are amazing. And it's so good to have you here today because essentially checking on your strong friends is checking on people, but it's for believers that's dealing with mental health. Mm-hmm. How do you correlate believers? Because we know the scripture, right? We know to have that relationship with God, but what about some of those people that may just get in a place where it's just like, I still kind of feel like they're battling, right? Yeah. Because they know that, you know, you know, God saves, God can do all things, you can do yeah. all things to Christ. But what about those believers or what about those people that sometimes those quiet places is kind of hard to mm-hmm. deal with? How do you feel as far as isolation versus solitude? Oh, yeah. Um, you have to learn the difference between loneliness um, and being in a place of solitude. 
loneliness is epidemic. I mean, one in four adults are dealing with loneliness. We're we are disconnected more than ever today. Social media, life, the pandemic, um, people not that are really hurt in life and they don't trust you know, because mm -hmm. of what they've been through. And so there's people have walled off their heart and not guarded. Scripture says, guard your heart, don't wall it. Mm -hmm. So nobody can overcome this wall to get to see who you are. Mm -hmm. Because your heart is made in, in the way I describe your heart is it is your mind, it is your will, and it is your emotions. And yeah. intimacy comes from a beautiful place of let me see into you. And if I can't get past the wall, we always have surface relationships. All right. So it's easy to disconnect. I think there's been a stigma that's been very hard in church of all you need is God. Yeah. All you need is God. And the thing that I love about God is God finds ways, he finds unique ways to help his people, especially um, individuals who are dealing with mental health. Yeah. And therapy is beautiful. Okay. I encourage therapy, therapy? all yeah. the time. I tell, tell individuals, um, therapy is surgery for the heart. It's helping you take down the walls and if you can reframe your thoughts, and if you can replace them with what God thinks about you, with right thinking, That's right. on your on the the situation, the thing that God does is God will confront, but He also restores. And there's a mm -hmm. difference between condemnation and conviction. That's God right. will convict you, and He will say, "Hey, that's not right," but He won't condemn you and say, "You're not right." It's a moment of different. One is a judgment on yourself. That's what Scripture says: "Don't don't judge." Yeah. You hold accountable. It's that is a wrong decision. But it doesn't mean that you are wrong as a person. Yeah. There's always redemptive aspects yeah. of what God can do. I think as adults, we beat ourselves up a lot. Absolutely. We beat ourselves up a lot. We overthink. Yes. We are guarded in a lot of ways, um, just from different things that has happened. And, you know, and I think healing hurts. Yeah. And yeah. some people don't want to hurt it. <laughs> I don't know else how to put it, but it's just like healing does hurt oh, it does. and to get to that other side you do have to be broken in a sense and you have to be like okay just recently i really did a thing where i used to travel a lot yeah um i've been to every country i've ever wanted to go to and it, essentially i was running yeah and i didn't realize i was running into when it was time to come back on the plane i would be crying i'm like well girl you just had this very nice extravagant <laughs> vacation you met all these great people but why yeah. are you crying on the plane and it was because I didn't want to come home. Yeah. And when I came home, I had to deal with real life. And when I had to deal with real life, mm. there was moments that I was avoiding. Yeah. And I had to say, I had to get to a point where I had to learn how to sit in it. Yeah. And I had to sit in uncomfortable feelings. And I had to journal. And I had to, whatever it feels like, if you feel it's loneliness, if you feel it's, you know, sometimes I had to surrender. That's, yeah. that's the place I had to get to as far as surrendering my old life. The way I was living, things that I can't control from the past. Yeah. And sometimes I will say that could have could put me in a place where I felt like I was depressed or yeah. I could get depressed. And those prayers, when I start praying and I say, well, God, this is a little bit, you know, I need you on this journey yeah. to get me through this. I will immediately feel God uplift me. And this is essentially how our page started because okay. I went through a quiet time and Wow. It's so crazy. Like I, I, like I've told you this before, I didn't grow up going to church. Yeah. And I like to say, you know, Jesus found me, and I went through a thing where the Holy Spirit was just on me. Yeah. And they said, leave your phones here, and I went forty days without a phone. Wow. And it sent me to Kenya. And it so sent you did me forty to days Egypt. without a phone. Forty and days without a phone, and I was in Kenya and Egypt. Okay. And it was the most unique experience because I've learned a lot about the Bible physically. Yeah. So when I went to Kenya, I seen tribes. Yeah. A tribe called the Mosaic tribe, and they don't do no electricity. Wow. And they had their priests, and they had their donkeys, their livestock, all of this stuff, just like the Bible. Now, mind you, I never read this in the Bible. I yeah. experienced it first. And the great thing about this is I was hard-headed. I was one of those people, like, sometimes you got to show me a little bit. Yeah. Now, I always had a great relationship with God, but as far as getting into, into Scripture, yeah. sometimes, like, if you said Sarah was 127 years old, I might be like, she ain't had a baby at 99. <laughs> like, that's okay. But I've seen a lady 130 yeah. over there and with no health conditions. Yeah. So she could have had a baby at 99 for sure. And yeah. I seen their young men, they fight the bears and the lions 
with, with their hands. So speaking of David, yeah. and he was, you know, he had to fight Goliath. He said, I don't need all of that. Just my shepherd bag. I'm from this small town. And I've seen that in real life. Yeah. And I think it's so great because I always get to correlate those experiences. So essentially, I feel like traveling did help me. But it was where I was traveling to. Yeah. And when I went with just me and God, I think God knows how to get to you. Oh, and, yeah. and whatever place. Does that make sense? Because yeah. this particular trip was different than any other trip I've been on. He didn't let none of my friends come with me. And I heard specifically, leave your phones. And it's the craziest thing because that's essentially how I got here today. Yeah. But... Our friends got mad. They couldn't find me. People was emailing me. Um, you know, imagine. one of my friends, she had planned to go on the trip with me. She wanted to come, but I just knew this was a different trip. Yeah. This wasn't the party trip. This wasn't this wasn't the trip. Like, you know, sometimes we take took those trips before. This was a very much I kept hearing all these spirits says, silence. Yeah. Silence. Obedience. Trust me. Trust me. It'll all make sense. And that was kind of scary for yeah. me. Um, I think we got a lot out. It was just us in the Bible. And I, don't ask me how I end up in this tribe with no electricity. And it was it was the greatest experience. And when yeah. I came back is when he said read this scripture. Gotcha. I'm in the book of Samuel now. I've been in the book of Samuel for like a <laughs> maybe like a month and yeah. a half and I'm just blown away yeah. right now. I'm it's blown away. Book. It's past the Goliath now with the, the Bathsheba story. He yeah. made me mad with that. I'm like David. Oh my God. Like the book of the Bible yeah. is tea. Yeah. People don't know the Bible is really tea. Yeah. You got another journey to go yes. through. Yes. David's off. He's, that life is a beautiful story, but there's some drama. It's some drama. I think I've just reached the drama. Yes. And I'm just like, oh my God, but in life, there's some drama. Yes. And there's some beauty as yeah. well. And there's also a lot of things you can speak on conviction. It's just really get into these places. Yeah. And I heard you say social media is not real. Not letting it get to yeah. your mind. Not letting it get to a place of you superior. You know, and this is things that happen, right? Some people get these positions. We see it with a lot of people, not just social media. You know, we see it in different, it could be a boss, it could be a, a pastor, it could be yeah. anyone just, you know, misusing those gifts. Yeah. Um, how do you stay grounded? Because I know you said you were you you are psychiatrist. You have your degree in psychiatry. Yep, all my degrees. And in you say you are an introvert, but I think these fields you are in, it requires you to be an extrovert. Would you differ? Would you say different? Um, it requires me to talk and be mm -hmm. around people. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am tired and I do get drained. Mm -hmm. um, but I have learned. I built my stamina to navigate it, and I've learned what I need. My quiet spots. You look in scripture and it says Jesus snuck away. Yeah. He went and prayed or this. Um, I'll sneak away. I'll sneak yeah. away in big crowds. Um, I can find quiet places. I'll sneak away at work. Yeah. I'll sneak away at whatever I need to and I can find quiet places. I think I do the same. Yeah. So I know myself um, in that sense. You asked how do you remain grounded or humble? Um, everything is temporary. Mm -hmm. um, it's meant to be enjoyed for the season that it's in. Yeah. Everything can be taken away. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. You know, God's blessed me tremendously. And from, you know, a financial perspective mm -hmm. to a health perspective, um, there's been, there's just, it's been very blessed in those areas, but all that can be gone tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and I want to enjoy life. But in order to connect with people, you have to be close to people. Yeah. And in order to be close to people, you gotta stay low sometimes. Yeah. Because people are in all kind of different spaces. Yeah. And for me, staying close to people is staying low, not thinking too high of yourself. You can't be reached, you can't be um, touched. Um, when you look at Jesus' life, I love modeling certain morals, my, how I operate through his lens. Mm -hmm. He was with everyone. Yeah. People are like, do you know who that is? Yeah. Like, you know who that is that's hanging out with you? It's like, you don't know who it is. It's like, hey, that's, you know, he looks at Zacchaeus in the tree. It's like, hey, let's go hang out. Mm -hmm. like, Why are you hanging out with him? You look at the disciples, and they're made of so many different characters. You know, he has Matthew, the tax collector. And it's mm -hmm. this face like, why are you hanging out with Matthew? Mm -hmm. Like, of all people, like, mm -hmm. they are the ones that are oppressing us. Yeah. And he's a part of the tribe. You got yeah. Peter, who is just off the chain, emotional. Mm -hmm. um, you have James and John, the sons of thunder. They just want to—they want their home thrown. Yeah, <laughs> they're angry for no reason. You got Down Thomas, 
Why are you with us? And you have Judas. It teaches me a lesson that God will call you into relationship with people that, in a sense, you don't know why they are there. Yeah. And it's not about necessarily them, but I believe that God gives you um, the fruit of the Spirit. Patience, peace, love, joy, and kindness. It gives you love, and it, and it allows you to talk through that agape-type love in 1 Corinthians 13, mm -hmm. and what love is. Yeah. And it's this moment so that you can walk through life with people, even when people um, are hard to walk with. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Jesus calls you to a Judas, mm -hmm. and I don't think people realize that. Wow. Like, they don't realize he will call you into spaces where people will betray you. He will call you mm -hmm. into a place where people will doubt you. He had Doubting Thomas on his team. He saw a lot of this. He will call you with people who will cut off ears for you. You got your friends and they're going to ride for you. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when things get hard, they might deny you. It's a moment to where God is going to bring people into your life. And the goal is not to replace people with God. When we replace people with God, then we get disappointed. That's right. That's and it's right. a moment where we have to know that, you know what? I need to know who you are. And there's a beautiful prayer in the book on uh, God, allow me to see people clearly so I know where to place them in my heart. Oh, that's good. Like, I need to know what season are we in right now? Are we are we friends? Because season our relationships can change seasons. So we can be a season where we're friends, and then we can change into a season where we're more of associates just because of life. Mm -hmm. It might change into a mentor-menteeship relationship. Mm -hmm. It might change into a relationship where there's... Um, it's a little adversarial at certain aspects. Mm -hmm. And you begin to look at um, Abraham and Lot in their space where they were. And everyone's like, look, we are having so much success that we got to separate. Like, I need mm -hmm. to be able to separate and go different spaces. You have to be able to know where people are so I can place you in the right space in my heart. Because it's almost like trying to use a spoon to cut a steak. Yeah. It's like I'm trying to use this person who's not my friend right now, but because we have history... I believe that this is always this is the way it should be and wow. what happens is we get in a space and we try and make people fit in areas they're not they're not designed to fit in anymore and maybe we've outgrown maybe they've outgrown and then we get frustrated and then in a sense we break up horribly we deal with conflict horribly yeah and now all of a sudden everybody's out and it's not that it's just the relationship changed but we didn't recognize the change Wow. And so there's a beauty in being able to know where your friend, where are we as friends? What season are we in? Mm -hmm. And being able to be mature and talk through that space and being okay to know that season can change again. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as humans, sometimes that we don't deal with rejection oh. or feeling rejected or feeling left out. Yeah. And I think it triggers other wounds. Yeah. And a lot of times when we're in relationships, I tell anybody, I tell some of the girls that are on my grow group, my small group, I say, you could think you heal from something specifically until you get into a relationship yep. with another person, like someone that you like. And I said, and that's when your real trauma, that's when the test really comes out. And it was also, or if you had a friend and you feel that this friend has surpassed you or you you super, surpassed them. Yeah. And it's just not there. Why do you feel we like to hold on to stuff? Or like, oh. if we reject it, we feel, oh, I could change this person. Oh. Because I know that's a thing, yeah. right? Well, yeah, fear. Fear. It's, it's, you know, scripture says it's, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. We make decisions out of fear. Mm. It's the moment of, you know, breakups are hard because breakups are like crashes. You're going 80 miles down the road. Life is great. You're going to a destination. And yeah. you're excited about where you're going. Driving down and the road is great. And out of nowhere you crash. Yeah. And it's just like that in a breakup. Is you're going 80 miles down the road where life is. You're looking to build a life with this person. Mm -hmm. You're making tons of decisions. And all of a sudden it crashes. Mm -hmm. And we don't talk about the trauma of a crash. Ooh. We don't talk about the impact of the damage that comes with a crash. Now in a sense I'm traveling down the road. I don't know where I am. It yeah. could be at night. I don't know how I'm going to replace this. The car is broken. My heart is broken. Mm -hmm. And now I'm left to pick up the pieces and I don't know where to go. Yeah. Do I still go to my destination? Right. Do I go back home? Do I go back to familiar places? Do I go back to exes? Do I go back yeah. to things that just make sense? <laughs> like, it's this moment where it's this fear and it's in a space where when we deal with rejection, we take it more personally than it should be. Right. God has a way of removing people when they need to be removed and removing things out of our hand. But one yeah. thing I learned is 
In your heart, it is a throne. Mm -hmm. It's not a couch. Mm -hmm. Only God should sit in that space. That's right. And we try and put a lot of different people in those spaces. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it is not work. It's not a myth. We don't need yeah, all I feel like when you do, it gets snatched away from you. Like, you get to idolizing anything, yes. I feel like, more than God. I don't know. It's yeah. going to get snatched. No, and you don't need to because it's a space where God will bring the right people into your life. And God, it, people are not sovereign. God is. Okay. People have opinions, but God has dominion. God will look at the situation and bring the right people into your life, but you have to trust them. But breaking is hard. And sometimes you have to break things, you have to break relationships, or you have rejection that comes in. You see the, you see the rejection as protection. Yeah. If they don't want me, that's okay. I don't, I, I remember I was telling a friend at a, a point, he was dating this young lady, and he had to keep telling the young lady to why they should be together. <laughs> and it was like all these times, he was just like, you know what? We had another talk. I was like, really? It's like, yeah. And it's like, I had to convince her uh, why it was good for us to be together. Yeah, like what? <laughs> and I was like, at some point, you need to ask her to make up her own mind. Mm -hmm. Because every time that you guys get in hard spaces, one of two things are going to happen. You're either going to have to convince her, or if she does her own navigating, then she will be in a space where she can say, you know what? This is why I made the decision. Yeah. And you have to be able to let people make their decisions. Yeah. We try and control and manipulate and be yeah. perfect. Love is not about that. You, I have seen people get together and it's like y'all together and they are happy as, as can right. be, but it's love. Right. And you've seen opposites attract. Like when love hits and it comes, it, love is a choice and it's a daily choice. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a beautiful example of my parents and how they choose each other every day. I'm so glad that you've seen that. Um, as a culture, I think we need to see yes. a lot of that more. Um, and sometimes it's heartbreaking because we don't see that. Yep. That it's like we don't know how to love. Yeah. And there is trauma. And you, the fact that you had a good family to show you that, do you know that's really special, yes. right? Yeah. Um, because it's a lot of us that do not. To have, and, and we get out here in the world and we're trying to do it our own and we say yeah. this is love and not knowing that this is this is nowhere near love yep. you have no idea what <laughs> love is like how was you even gonna even yes. get you didn't even have all the tools to even be successful in this atmosphere so it's like i admire you so much for that and i admire your family so much for that for even building that solid oh, yeah. foundation because the way you speak on it we people need to know that's possible oh my dad is is i mean he's the goat i love him um, he taught us a couple of things as well. It's the moment where you get together and you build a life together. Yeah. That's the goal. Can we build something special? Yeah. And So my dad taught us um, one how to cook. All the boys, we all know how to cook. It's not, it's not there's not gender roles or gender wars. It's mm -hmm. like if you're hungry, you're gonna have to cook. Yeah. And so you need to know how to eat. You need to know how to eat what you want to eat. Um, we all know how to clean. Yeah. It's like we don't need to be living in dirty houses. Yeah. Um, we all know how to change tires. We know how to work on cars. We know how to do yard work. Yeah. Like my dad taught us responsibility, but for a couple reasons. One, he's a doctor, and my mom is a doctor of education. And they showed the beauty of teamwork. My dad came mm -hmm. from a space where um, he didn't see a lot and God blessed him to be able to go to school. And he became a doctor and he met my mom while he was in um, optometry school. Uh -huh. When he came back home and he started his office and started his business, of course, you know, he's um, trying to make money, trying to get patients. He wanted his own practice. Not a lot of people were coming. My mom was the one who held the family down. She was the one when they had me that she had the insurance and it was her check that we were depending on because she believed in the vision in him. Wow. So then as you as he since the business began to grow, um, the tables, you know, they began to turn in a sense. And now he was like, What do you want to do? Where do you want to go with your career and your education? So then my dad would be responsible for when we got off after school, we would go to his office when my mom was getting her masters so that she could be an assistant principal. Wow. And she had to go to the games and this, and we would be with dad, and he would be going over homework with us. He would be cooking dinner. He would As be a doctor dinner. too, yep. no excuses. And it's just, mom's coming home, mom be home around nine. Mom would come home, we sit around, tell about our day and where we're going. But that was for years that she got her mm -hmm. master's, and she began to go through and get her PhD. So I saw people work together to mm -hmm. build it to where now, everybody in my family is a doctor except for me. 
Everybody um, is living life and, and they're in a beautiful space and doing really, uh, really cool things in there. They got a great foundation. Everybody's a doctor. Yep. And you said no doctor for me. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I know my, my lane. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't do well. Wow. I didn't do that well. Were you judged for not being a doctor? Um, Not judged. I was pushed. Okay. I will say that. My dad was very big on accountability and... Um, and really, what do you want making you think through that? And mm -hmm. so he always challenged, what are you going to do? And I'm always in the space of, I don't know, but it'll work out. You mm -hmm. know, Romans 8, 28 was always one of my favorite scriptures. God may, will make all things work according to good for those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. And I always wanted to do ministry, and my dad was like, I don't think you want to do ministry the way you think you want to do ministry. <laughs> he's like, I know you. Um, he's like, you think you want to be a missionary? And so when I was 16, he sent me on my very first missionary trip. Mm -hmm. And he sent all of us. All of us, when we were 16, we went overseas for mission uh, missions. And they were safe missions trips, I call them. Uh, we went, my very first one was to Costa Rica. And we went to an orphanage, and it opened my eyes at 16 of the world is not like this small place in Louisiana where I'm from. Mm -hmm. These people are different. And it was a space to where I knew I wanted to make a difference. And my dad would always challenge, I don't care what you do, get your education and you can do whatever you want to do. Yeah. And God just opened up some beautiful doors. Yeah. And I began to walk through them to where now it has, everything works out. We all are in a beautiful space. Yeah, yeah. So you say, do you feel it's okay to not be okay then? Because for believers that are navigating different seasons of their life or just say that their friends are changing. Because yeah. you mentioned different friends for a season. Yes. The idea essentially of checking on your strong friends is really checking on those people that's quiet. Yeah. And it's also being able to communicate better. Next for you. I know you're on your... Oh, hold on. Yeah, let's start okay. that. Okay, go ahead. Solomon. What yes. do you like to be called? Um, so I may do solo. Yeah. I don't care. I love nicknames. <laughs> um, I do. And as long as I was, I, my father taught me something beautiful. It doesn't matter what people call you, it's what you answer to. Wow. And so he taught us very quickly in life, especially growing up in Louisiana and dealing with a lot of race relations. It doesn't matter what people call you, what do you answer to? You control your environment. Don't let people control you. That's um, good. And so I could care less. Yeah, dad seems like a guy of a lot of wisdom. I'm yeah. sure a lot of people call him for advice <laughs> and just everything they can think of because he seems like a great person even yeah. as a, or even as a friend yes. in life. Um, what's next for you though? I know you're in your third book. Are you gonna do a fourth? What does life look Ooh. like, or do you have any plans in the next few years? Um, so Hey God has I'm tremendously blown away by the support with Hey God. Um, it the book sells every day, all day around the world. I don't know, I don't promote it um, in a sense of um, advertisement or anything. It just sells all day, every day. So it's a blessing. I get messages all day, um, every day from the impact of the book has helped people navigate hard spaces. And so this year, um, I have I am a constant giver. Um, I love to bless people, and I love to bless people and help people in such a way that. Um, they know God sees them. Mm. And so it's in extraordinary ways. And so it's really turned into some philanthropy. And so we are um, giving away, helping people pay bills, giving away money, um, navigating some dreams, helping people get mm -hmm. some um, solid footing, um, purchasing some vehicles uh, for some individuals. What? And some uh, vehicles? Yes. You purchased some vehicles? I didn't find out this information. Um, well, let's just say that God brings the right people in the right spaces. Okay. And uh, we take care of them. I constantly am asked to do all kind of counseling. And so at least two or three nights a week, I am doing mentorship or counseling with couples or young men mm -hmm. um, and helping them just navigate life or where they want to be. Um, and then to uh, tap it off is every year I go to Disney uh, for a riding trip. Um, Disney was an amazing experience when I went about four years ago. This man changed the world with a rap and mm -hmm. storytelling. And I began to see the power of that and what he could do and what he could build. And I was like, if he can do that, I can write a book. And so every year I go down, but also take um, a single parent family and just bless them with a trip to Disney that they probably couldn't afford on their own. Wow. 
Wow. And just just to have some joy. Yeah, that's amazing. That's we'll write another book and probably do a journal. And there's tons of speaking engagements and things. So you are going to speak? Um, I will, yes. And I always speak. It's just I don't ever promote it. It's, okay. I do speak. Okay, well, I, it is such a pleasure to have you today because we see your prayers. We see a little a little bit of you, <laughs> but you you just wouldn't have known. I mean, you would know. Like, if, like me, I, I feel like I live in the spirit. I know. <laughs> but like you said, sometimes social media is not a real place. These I could tell from hearing you speak, you know a lot about your Bible. Yeah. Um, you're very strong. As a believer, you're very strong in your walk. You're very strong in modeling the fruits of the Spirit in your daily life. And that's amazing, right? We, we need that. We need to see that. We need to see that you come from that. And we are very honored to have you on our platform. I'm going to ask you to pray for us. And I'm going to just ask you to pray for anybody that's dealing with any mental health issues, anybody that may be battling their walk, anybody may be battling if they want to be, some people, I don't know if I want to be a Christian, but I'm spiritual mm -hmm. or, you know, I'm not, I, I believe in God, but I'm not religious. Yeah. You know, just anybody that's battling any uh, inner voices that yeah. may not serve them purpose and what God has planned for them. Yeah. Well, I will tell the camera, I will, I will, I will tell you this, it's to give God a chance. Um, not necessarily people, organizations, give God a chance and let him guide you. Um, I've seen God do amazing things in my life. My life is not perfect. I have had um, a lot of situations that I shouldn't be the way that I am today. But God has been faithful, and I know that because of how I see people and how I see life. And so I would be honored to pray. I love what you're doing. I love this. And I love the fact that we're checking on our friends because we need each other. We need people. Um, life's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot that happens in this world. Life be life. Yeah. Um, but God be God. God. He does. <laughs> but I've learned this, that God blesses us. And sometimes the way that he blesses us comes into our life on two legs. And we need to be open to those blessings because yeah. we're not, we miss that. So I'll definitely pray and close this out. Yes, um, hey, God, we love you. God, we thank you for this opportunity, one, to come together and really just connect with you. I thank you, Father, for those who are watching this, no matter what state they're in, whether they're in a state where life is beautiful or they're in a state where it's in the middle of the storm and they are willing, to, they're ready to give up. I thank you that you're with all of us in each and every season. I thank you that you keep your hand upon us and you continue, one, to push us to the places that we talk about. For those who are struggling, may you keep your hand on them and may you surround them. May they know that they are loved. May they know that you have a passion and you have purpose for them. And may you bring people into their life. May their, may their, may their friends check on them and know that, one, they love them and that they're there to help walk through the situation or the season or whatever they're dealing with. For those who don't know, if they want to give you a trust, I thank you for, or give you a chance. May you on open up their hearts and I thank you that you bring in opportunities for them to walk with you and may they experience and know your goodness. I thank you, Father, for one, um, for this ministry and, and on God and what it's doing. I think you continue to keep your hand on it. You continue to keep your hand on the leaders and you continue to push them closer into you. And I thank you that when people see them and they see this ministry, they don't see it, but they see you shining through. We love you, we honor you, and we thank you. So my name is Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I have one of these bags for you. Love it. And I have some merchandise for you. And I hope you love it. Yes. You enjoy it. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much.